In section 9.4, we will visit DNA replication in eukaryotic organisms and discuss key differences from that of prokaryotic organisms. In this first part, we will focus on the importance of the cell cycle. The cell cycle is an ordered series of events involving cell growth and cell division that produces two new daughter cells. The cell cycle has two major phases, interphase, which is shown in gray, and the mitotic phase, which is shown in peach. During interphase, the cell grows and the DNA is synthesized or replicated. During the mitotic phase, the replicated DNA and the cytoplasmic contents are separated and the cell divides. The G1, or first gap phase and in interphase, involves cell growth and protein synthesis. S phase involves the DNA replication and the replication of the centrosome. And the G2 phase, or the second gap phase, involves further growth and protein synthesis. The mitotic phase consists of both mitosis, where the genetic material is separated into two different poles within the cell, and then cytokinesis, where the cytoplasm is split and the two separate daughter cells are formed. In contrast to prokaryotes, eukaryotes typically have multiple linear chromosomes that make up their genetic material. Recall that those linear chromosomes will have a centromere that holds two arms of the chromosome together. It provides an attachment site for the mitotic spindle. This will allow the replicated chromosomes to be separated from one another after replication. DNA replication occurs during the S phase or synthesis phase of interphase and will lead to the production of the sister chromatids, which are identical copies of one another. This is not to be confused with homologous chromosomes that carry different alleles of the same gene sets. One set of homologous chromosomes comes from the mother and one set from the father. You can see the karyotype from a human cell here with the homologous chromosomes free floating around this area. The matching homologous chromosome pairs have been aligned in the left-hand corner. Each of the chromosomes is in its linear form and has not been replicated yet. So there's no sister chromatids that are present within this karyotype. The sister chromatids will have an X shape to them as both arms of the chromosome have been replicated and both chromatids are held together at the centromere. Progression of the cells through the cell cycle requires the coordinated action of specific protein kinases known as cyclin-dependent kinases. Cyclin-dependent kinases are usually abbreviated as CDK or CDC proteins. Cyclin-dependent kinase proteins require the binding of a cyclin regulatory subunit to become activated. The major cyclins that help drive the progression of the cell cycle are only expressed at very discrete times during the cell cycle. When an active cyclin encounters its counterpart, the cyclin-dependent kinase, the kinase enzyme will become activated and it will phosphorylate downstream targets that are involved with cell cycle progression. For example, the cyclin E CDK2 complex that's activated during the transition of the cell from the G1 phase into the synthesis phase will phosphorylate a downstream target called the retinoblastoma protein, or PRB. In its phosphorylated state, it will release the E2F transcription factor this will go on to bind to DNA and cause the transcription of genes that are required for the synthesis and replication of DNA to begin. We can also look at the expression of cyclin levels graphically over time. In this case, time is going to represent progression through the cell cycle, through G1, S phase, G2, and mitosis. What you see is the expression of different cyclin proteins is required for the cell to pass through these different phases in the cell cycle. For example, the increase in cyclin D is required to cause the increase of cyclin E complex. 
the activity of cyclin E can then push the cell into S phase and begin the synthesis phase or where DNA replication will occur. At the end of DNA replication, the cyclin A expression has increased to a level that will shift the cell into the G2 phase. Cyclin B is then required for the transition into mitosis. Notice here that cyclin D levels tend to remain elevated during the progression of the cell cycle through the end of mitosis. Notice here that the cyclin D levels are not always high within the cell and that the cells do not always have to be traversing the cell cycle. If cells are not actively undergoing progression through the cell cycle, they can be in a state of quiescence that's known as G0 that's shown here. So they can exit the cell cycle and they won't be actively growing or getting ready to divide and create a daughter cell. If cells enter G0 permanently, they are said to have entered a stage of replicative senescence and will no longer be maintained for long-term viability within the organism. Depending on the cell type and location within the body, different cells will be in different states along this progression, either within the cell cycle they might be quiescent but then may re-enter or they may have undergone replicative senescence and they will no longer re-enter the cell cycle. For example, if you look at a layer of skin cells or the epidermis, what you will see is that there's a layer of basal cells at the base of this epidermis. These cells are consistently in the cell cycle and they will be producing daughter cells they get pushed up in the epidermal layer. These cells are called keratinocytes and they represent the most numerous cells within the epidermis. As these new cells are made and move away from this basal layer, they enter into replicative senescence. And then the very outer layer up here, the cells have actually died and they are providing a protective sheath between the living cells and the outside environment. In the next section, we will look more closely at the process of eukaryotic DNA replication during the S phase.